Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Harry, and I like to talk about code around these parts. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about a very difficult subject because it's about a very difficult language. It's my white whale, so to speak, my Moby Dick, my elusive, lost, unrequited accomplishment. Uh, this is a very long about way of saying that I'm trying to learn Rust, and I have been for a very long time, and I have not yet become a Rust programmer. I've read the Rust book back and forth, well, mostly forward, uh, at least two, three times now. Once on vacation in Florida, because that's what I enjoy to read in my free time, and once at my desk to try to actually really ingrain that knowledge, but uh, through both times, haven't really had much success in learning Rust. Uh, let me let me get some more uh, detail for you right here. So this is the Rust website and they have actually a whole section just about learning. And this is where I found the book, right? Read this book. And this is an excellent book to learn Rust. It actually has an amazing overview. If this was a paid book, it would be well worth the money, but it's free because the Rust community is nice. Very in depth, very, and I've read this all amazingly enough. I've even read, I've even done the uh, Rustlings course to kind of like try things out. I've looked at Rust by example and still to no avail until finally I realized that one of the big tricks that I've used in the past to learn things is to actually try to make a project with it. So one of the first things that I figured I'd try to do is to make a uh, web app because I am a web developer. There's this really funny, in my opinion, website called arewebyet.org, which is pretty amazing. This A, this website exists, and B, it's just for Rust. That's a great domain name, really cool. But it's all about, you know, kind trying to convince you that Rust is web ready. And I imagine it is, but when I was delving into it, the ergon ergonomics of using Rust for a web app, and by that I mean, the code you have to write in Rust to make a web app wasn't the most enjoyable, frankly. And then I was reading some more on it, and the general sentiment that I got is that Rust is fine for web app, but it's not really where it excels, frankly. So I kind of stopped worrying about that because, um, I mean, it looks, go to the website, please. It looks fine, right? But like, there's a lot of extra stuff that Rust asks you to do to work, which just doesn't really make a lot of fun when making a web app. So that was out the window as well. And so what I realized is that I needed a kind of like uh, command line -y application to play with. And luckily, uh, I could make a to-do app, which, no, I'm not gonna do that. That's way too boring. Um, a, a while ago, you may not know this, I actually made a uh, static site generator Fun little story about this static site generator. It's called Reptar Now. It was actually originally called Yarn because a blog is where you write, so you get to spin your own yarn. And it was called Yarn before Yarn the Package Manager existed. And then Yarn the Package Manager came out. I guess this dates me a lot, doesn't it? The Yarn the Package Manager came out, and I wasn't about to compete with the Mindshare that it came with. So if you're gonna Google Yarn, you're gonna see the package manager and not my static site generator. So I figured I risk Nickelodeon's wrath and <laughs> rename it to Reptar. But um, making a static site generator was a lot of fun. Uh, it's not maintained anymore, do not use it. I will not give you any support for it. But it was kind of fun just kind of understanding what was involved in making one. So I figured this is a nice like, you know, low level type of application that would really benefit from types. So I figured I'd make it in Rust. So that's what I've started to do. I've started to make a static site generator in Rust called Fetter. Uh, I'm doing it in my free time, whenever I can find it. Uh, Fetter is a play, it's a word. Uh, someone on Twitter told me that Fetter in um, German means fat, but I'm English, so this is just about a chain or manacle which is made from metal and metal can rust. That's the connection. It's just. It's a Rust pun because I'm a developer and that's all that it does. And I'm working on this to make it work and it's fun. I have, you know, the main entry file where it prints hello world because I haven't yet actually 
change that yet. And then I have my little fetter thing. I'm trying to start to like learn what the heck's happening here. Uh, I have a little config file as well for the actual name. So you can, here's the, the example of a fetter app with a TOML file for your name. And the config file says, where's the name of the TOML file and tries to deserialize it. So from TOML. And this barely makes any sense to me, but it's helping me learn for sure. Uh, I'm following the approach of make it work, make it right, make it fast. Because a big problem when trying something new is you want to make it the right way right away or make it fast right away. And that's where you run into trouble because I have no idea what I'm doing at all. Very little bit. So I'm just trying to make it work. So that's, that's like a good, uh, a good little model that if you haven't heard before is a great one, but you got to make the thing work, just make it work, which thankfully this is working for now. Like if I, if I run this, where's uh, I got to reload this cause my developer tools isn't happy. Um, let's see. Oh, come on, man. Live debugging right here, but rust is fast. So it should be fine. Indexing on my cores. And then if I run this, it should print hello world. And is that it? Come on. Boop, 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 boop. There you go. It's printing hello world. It's doing the TOML file and it's walking the directory tree to see all the content in there. So that's all that I have. It's just working right now. And that's, I am ecstatic about that. I mean, to peel beneath the curtain a little bit, this is like my in progress uh, window as I'm developing where I have a tab for the book to learn what the heck a module is for us because it seems like mod is kind of like a include statement in C. So it kind of includes the source file and you can also reference the um, uh, the modules inside of it. It's kind of like a separate separation of things, which I don't know. I read JavaScript. I don't know what I'm doing. Here's references for the uh, file system with all these like intent annotations for path, toml crate, creates like an NPM thing, the, the toml source code, which I think confused me more than it helped me. Uh, constants, which I didn't realize was a thing. Yeah, when I was doing this, I had a constant, where was it, lib? Uh, here, here's the constant. I had this lowercase before and the compiler, that's one of the best things about uh, Rust. If I do toml uh, file name, it was yelling at me because it's like, you can't, yeah, 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 I know. It's fine, it's fine. It was yelling at me because when I run this, it's like constants should be, um, there we go. This is one of the things that is nice about Rust is that it'll actually teach you as you go, but it'll say, you know, uh, convert the identifier to uppercase because constants should be uppercase by default. Look at that built in help for fun. But this is just me trying to figure out what the hell I'm doing. Cause I really have no idea. Uh, I was coding to a movie while making this because I like the interaction, but um, that's it. Just want to kind of share my little journey about that. That was it. Uh, I'm not really going to live code any of this. I mean, I might live code it, but the videos that I'll make about learning Rust are going to be few and far in between because I know nothing, but I think it's kind of helpful for you to know that I know nothing. It makes me feel calmer. Just imposter syndrome all the way down, up and down, up and down. Okay. 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 So that's kind of my confessional about learning Rust. Uh, I'm rusty about it. <laughs> that's not funny. Uh, hopefully you kind of got that. If you know Rust and want to teach me, uh, let me know. Otherwise I'll just muddle my way through it, which is fine, but it's fun. Uh, it's kind of interesting learning all the uh, uh, low level things that are required in Rust, which I look at as kind of like a C with a built-in mentor of best practices, which is what I've heard about Rust. But uh, why do I learn Rust? It just seems like fun. I don't really have a real use case for it, as you can tell, because I'm making a static site generator, and that's what the world needs, is another static site generator, but here we are. So that's the video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, if you did enjoy that, let me know. If you know Rust, don't tell me, I'll get jealous, but no, tell me, it's fine. Uh, with that said, uh, I'll catch you in the next video, so stay happy, don't get rusty, stay coding. See ya.